All right, here's an article from over a year ago, VM Endpoint Backup, getting it to work with Windows 10 back when it was beta. And it took some effort, but it works. There is a workaround. So let's get started. Uh, why am I doing this? Because I'm on Windows Server 2016. What does that mean? So what? Well, watch what happens when you try to run the VM Endpoint Backup installer. Okay. You can play with compatibility, which I tried, and it did not work. <laughs> so we are resorting to this. So one of the first things it tells you is you got to go and download the software. I got that. And download 7-zip. Got that right here. Let's finish kicking off that download. Now, the version of 7-zip here. Okay. How about I just... Follow my own link. There we go. That was quick. Got ourselves our 7-zip in a few more moments. Why are we using 7-zip? Well, it explains. What it does is lets us unpack an EXE. So do you remember the uh, EXE? Well, that's what we're about to work on. Now, these directions were for a little older version of VM Endpoint Backup, right? But that's okay. Shouldn't matter. Right-click, 7-zip, extract files to a subfolder. Okay. Go into that subfolder, navigate. I don't know why that formatting ended up a little funny, but at least I got the sequence there. I'll go ahead and clean up that article. So endpoint redist x64 is the folder we want. And SQL local db msi first. Okay, next, shared management objects. And finally, SQL, there you go. Okay. Didn't take very long. This is on a Samsung 950 Pro NVMe M.2 drive. So speedy. Okay, so we got those. Now I go to endpoint, endpoint. Double click the 64 bit one. Hmm. Okay, so it's telling me it's going to fail to a local admin thing. Yep, it did. Close. Okay. Now we're going to right-click troubleshoot compatibility. Keep reading the directions. All right, so it fails again due to local admin error. Okay, I've cleaned that formatting. I've added the step of test the program. So I've gone ahead and fixed the article there. These are formatted nicer. And here it says troubleshoot compatibility, compatibility, excuse me, and then click test the program. It fails again. Close the error. Close the Veeam failure message. And save the changes and close the troubleshooter. This is where it's pretty weird. So I'm not going to click finish, I'll click close, shouldn't really matter. Save the changes and close the troubleshooter. Hmm. Okay, so I missed a step. Save the changes and close. 
All right, now when I launch, let me hit refresh over here. I clean that up a little bit more. There you go. Double click. Okay, the troubleshooter did not show up this time. Oh, it did. There you go. This is the sequence. I remember trying over and over to get this to work right. And uh, this is the only sequence that worked. And it's in my video, by the way. The directions are not perfect, but I think I got them better now. So I'm going to be um, saying no, it didn't work. Okay, his directions are nicely cleaned up. This is it. So what it's saying is, when I click no, launch the troubleshooter. And then click test the program. You see it's injected skip version check. And there you go. How cool is that? <laughs> it's crazy. Now, I'm just going to set that aside and continue with the install. Shouldn't take very long because those three other prerequisites are already in the environment, already installed. And finish. Now this dialog, I can just click the close button in the corner. Okay, the directions are now cleaned up. And and attach it locally to the super server here. So this should get the backup done in a jiffy to a local data store. Entire computer, local storage. Beam backup sounds good. This is a one-off. And off it goes. Now it warned me, if it doesn't compress enough, it may end up filling up storage. So take a look here. We've got free space, almost 400 gig. But the C drive that we're trying to back up is 199 plus the B compression. So it might not, you know, it should be fine. It's just kind of warning me. So it sure does appear that VM endpoint backup is working fine with Windows Server 2016 Data Center Technical Preview 5. We got this thing installed, man. It worked, the same old procedure that worked with Windows 10 beta days over a year ago still works with Windows Server 2016. There's VM endpoint backup. And there's the other three things that we manually installed. So now it's the next day and the backup went well and I actually did a second backup. So let's have a look. So under 20 gig size, if we look at the drive size, Sorry, the folder size, about 21 gig. Okay, so there's the files, there's the backup set. Very modest size considering how much the C drive showed in use. 200 gig roughly, so impressive. So that went well. How about we go back here and daily differential where no changes were made. A uh, tiny backup and takes only two minutes to USB 2. Now recovery media, well, I have other videos covering how to do that. You basically walk through the wizard and put in a USB key. But in my case, I've already made the recovery media. And you might have spotted that briefly right here, Veeam recovery. So I've got recovery media. I'm ready to do a test restore to really make sure that Windows Server 2016 technical preview five to make sure this beta really does work on a UFI BIOS machine. 
So this is kind of a, a little more advanced backup than the old school backup days of MBR, you know, small drives. So in case you're not aware, GPT formatted file systems, uh, NTFS, GPT formatted partitions, excuse me. Ah, let me try that again. When you create a partition, it's MBR or GPT type. If you're on a UAFI machine, you by default get a GPT type, and that means it could be three terabytes and you can boot from it. So hopefully you followed all that. That's just a modern C drive for the OS, Windows OS of the future. Uh, use UFI if you can, and uh, use GPT where possible. And then you get yourself an expandable C drive where you can just clone to a bigger drive someday and not have to worry about making a D drive. Particularly handy in a home lab we're talking about here. And I'm realizing now I booted it off of the USB 2 port in the front. I really should have shoved it into the USB 3 port on the back for a little better speed, but it's really not bad. That's pretty fast anyway. All right, bare metal recovery. Let's do it. You may have noticed a network port uh, was down in the bottom right. It did find a driver. I just don't have the cables attached at all. Wow, look at that. So it found an auto-matched a backup. I didn't have to poke around for it at all. I found it a locally attached USB 3 port and I just have to click next. It's that easy. Which one do I want? Looks like my clocks uh, were a little offset, which is fine. I'm just going to hit next. So my incremental is what's going to happen. Entire computer. Auto match worked. So you saw me not even click the or move the mouse. I just dot 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 next next next. Simple. Okay, with any uh, luck, which doesn't seem to be needed with Veeam. <laughs> I've been using this for I don't know a year and a half. So unlike the old days of ghosting, where it seemed like I don't know 10 20 percent of the time you try to restore and you get a mysterious error, things have gone quite well with Veeam Endpoint Backup. I've been able to rely on it for peace of mind and know that my backups are good. And if I have a particularly important backup, but I don't have a machine to restore it to, to test it, like it's big and beefy, I'll restore to a VM, say, and just, um, just to make sure it seems to um, be a legit backup. Okay, so we'll be back when this thing is done recreating partitions and restoring itself. I'll pause the video now. Well, that was pretty fast. Uh, about six minutes for the whole process, so... So I'm hitting F11 to invoke the boot menu. You see in the bottom left, it's reflected that. And this will let me show you what we're booting from. I don't want to boot from the USB Veeam recovery media. I want to boot from Windows Boot Manager. That's the C drive. That's the Samsung 950 Pro M.2 NVMe drive. So we'll see Windows come up in a kind of rehydrated form or restored form. And that should convince us that we have a legit backup. I probably should have done um could have done a rollback, like put an icon on the desk on a differential backup and restored from the original to show that icon disappear. Well, anyhow. Uh, I've done many such videos about Veeam. This is really just a one off beta to show you that it works. It's saying it shut down unexpectedly. So we've restored to a moment in time when Windows twenty sixteen was actually, you know, up and running. So what we should see here, well, we're not really going to see much evidence of anything. If we look at Event Viewer, so we lost half an hour that just, you know, vanished. Um, that's it. I'd say we have Veeam Endpoint Backup fully functional and working. Aha, uh -huh, the differential has disappeared. I notice this also went reverted. There you go. So hopefully you found this useful and uh, compelling that we really did rewind this machine in time. And, well, it works. <laughs> Despite the really goofy install process uh, that is kind of strange and very particular about what you click on and what you do and follow the directions exactly, you will get yourself a way to back up and restore through Veeam, even though I realize there are native backup 
utilities, Veeam does make it easier to create restore media and do things over network shares and so forth. Easier than the built-in native backup abilities of Windows uh, 10 and Windows Server. So, okay, thanks again. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And thank you for watching TinkerTry.com videos and for visiting TinkerTry.com.